Senator Raphael Warnock delivered a speech um, on the floor of the Senate responding to yet another shooting, this time in Atlanta, Georgia. And his remarks were really powerful. And so I want to uh, play them for you today and then we'll discuss. They're obviously specifically responding to what happened in Atlanta, but also just the general reality we face in this country on a daily basis with gun violence. Here is Raphael Warnock. And then in a deeper sense, I think it's important for us to recognize that it's already happening to you. You may not be the victim of a mass shooting. You may not know anyone who's the victim of a mass shooting yet. But in a real sense, it is already happening to all of us. Dr. King was right. We are tied in the single garment of destiny, caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. This is knocking on all of our doors. And I feel this this afternoon in a very real sense. I feel it in my bones because my own two children were on lockdown this afternoon. I have two small children and their schools were on lockdown responding to this tragedy. They are there, I'm here. Hoping and praying that they are safe. But the truth is none of us is safe. As a pastor, I'm, I'm praying for those who are affected by this tragedy, but I hasten to say that thoughts and prayers are not enough. And in fact, in fact, it is a contradiction to say that you are thinking and praying and then do nothing. It, it, it is to make a mockery of prayer. It is to trivialize faith. We pray not only with our lips, we pray with our legs. We pray by taking action. The message of thoughts and prayers are not enough is as credible as it gets coming from an actual pastor, an actual reverend. But he's exactly right. When you have the power as a lawmaker to address a problem, but you choose day after day, as the Republican Party does, to stand in the way of progress while you tell us you're hoping things get better, you're praying, you're sending your thoughts. If that were true, as Raphael Warnock just said, you would also pray with your legs and act. Hoping by itself that something will get better is meaningless when you are the one with the power to make it better. If you're someone who prays, you should be praying, yes, for the families impacted and yes, that things will get better generally, but also for the motivation. If you're a lawmaker with the power to make change, pray for the motivation and courage to act as a lawmaker, no matter the political cost, to implement common sense solutions to the devastating problem uh, we experience in this country. And uh, Raphael Warnock is ready to act and do just that. All the Democratic lawmakers are ready to implement common sense gun regulations to do just that. So Republicans, yes, the eyes are on you. The eyes are on you to finally accept the fact that the United States has more guns than any other uh, country in the world, and they're way less regulated than every other developed country, and thus we have more gun violence by far than every other developed country on this planet. And look at this graphic. Um, that I just put up on screen for our video viewers that CNN put together. And you can see on the x-axis you have rate of guns owned per 100 people. On the y-axis you have gun-related homicide, homicide rate per 100,000 people. And we are way higher up on the y-axis, way further to the right on the x-axis. And a complete outlier. Look at all the other developed countries and we are way over here. It's not a coincidence. It is not a coincidence that uh, this is the reality. And while we're um, on the subject, let's once again walk through the facts on this. As CNN um, also writes, a 
study published here, let me full screen it. A study published in January by a leading nonprofit organization that focuses on gun violence prevention found that there's a direct correlation in states with weaker gun laws and higher rates of gun deaths, including homicides, suicides, and accidental killings. And then um, this from Politico, you can see this, another visual, I'll describe it for our podcast listeners. When you look at different regions of the country, it is clear in present areas that are historically and currently governed by Republicans have disproportionately higher rates of gun violence. Look at this map. It is clear. It is concerning. And one of the things that should also be noted is even the gun violence that does occur in places with stricter gun laws um, actually is oftentimes having those guns that are used in those crimes come from areas with weaker gun laws. An example of this is uh, is New York City. A new report, as Vox writes from the New York State Office of the Attorney General, offers an answer. The firearms used in that violence tend to come from other places that don't have strict gun laws. The report released this week looked at the guns uh, recovered from crime scenes in the state. It found that 74% of guns, 74% of guns used in crimes between 2010 and 2015 came from states with lax gun laws um and by the way it's not just impacting these lax gun laws the united states it's also bleeding over into other countries from business insider and the headline writes uh criminals are buying guns in u.s states with loose gun laws and then smuggling them into uh them to haiti the united nation says and uh the weapons are fueling a spike in gang violence in haiti the report found loose gun regulations in the United States have turned the country into a gold mine for weapons traffickers. A UN report found criminals are capitalizing off lax gun laws in the United States, specifically in Florida, to traffic weapons into Haiti, exacerbating an already dire crime problem there, the United Nations said in its report released earlier um, this month. And so it's not that we don't have the answer. We do. We do. Yes, also invest in mental health. Republicans, by the way, block that. But yes, invest in school security, et cetera, et cetera. But today, we know we can make a difference with more common sense regulations on the gun. What does that mean? Well, ideally, um, we would have a system set up where guns would be treated just like cars. The entire process you're familiar with for getting a car, the training, the testing, the licensing, the renewing of a license should all be in place for guns as well. But we are really far from that happening. So more realistically, to name a few, banning assault weapons and high, cap ha uh, high capacity magazines, universal background checks, eliminate the private sale exemption, red flag laws, raising the age to purchase guns to 21, mandatory waiting periods, and the list goes on. No one's saying you can't have a firearm. You can't. You should go through a process, though. And I'll close, um, I'll close with this message. Republicans, you have a choice. And I'm talking to the lawmakers, obviously, but Republican voters need to support the proper lawmakers as well. You have a choice. This is all a decision that is being made here. The facts about gun violence and how to limit um, it are now and have for a while been widely publicized so you can't plead ignorance anymore you can't say you actually think more guns that are less regulated makes us safer when that flies in the face of all of the empirical information we can have the second amendment and properly regulate killing tools at the same time i know we keep saying this but in my current position uh <laughs> that's really all i can do right so i will keep saying it it's your choice to prevent us from making change on this issue day after day. That should weigh on your conscience as a Republican lawmaker.